call this meeting of the Juno Utility Commission to order. Roll has been taken. Need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Ross, second by Dick to approve the agenda. Any questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Minutes of the previous meetings. Second. Motion by Dick, second by Bard. Approve the minutes of the previous meetings. Any questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Public appearances. Aaron, okay. you're up right away. Uh, so I can tell you. Uh, so he's uh, area code 317 465. One five six four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's Alex. Hey, Alex, it's Aaron with How are you? Good. Uh, we're just uh, getting ready to present here. Um, so what I'll do, I'll let you know what schedule I'm speaking from once we get through it. And then uh, if I have any questions, I'll turn it over to you. I'll try to sit near the phone so you can hear me. Good evening, everyone. I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, the last time we spoke, roughly a month ago, uh, we had discussed that we'd be presenting uh, the draft uh, sewer rate study. So what I want to do through here, um, Alex and, and Laurie and everyone have been spending a considerable amount of time pulling this together, so I appreciate uh, everyone's urgency in getting this. Uh, as you look through these key schedules, you'll see there's a lot of information in here and a lot of work that went into it, but I appreciate everyone I'm making this a priority so we can present draft uh, results tonight. So if we start, just take a look at Schedule 1, a couple things I want to walk through. If we break down the rate study, the first thing we do is we need to determine uh, a test year, which is going to be, we're forecasting everything on fiscal 2021. That's what we're going to ba base our rate increase on. Uh, so what we do is we determine what the revenue requirement is. You know, what do you need to recover in rates to recover all your costs? So this Schedule 1 is very key. So what you'll see is we're showing three years of actual data uh, for metered sales, uh, operation and maintenance expenses, and then you'll see what the forecast is. So if we look at uh, 2021, you'll see your projected total metered sales as $830,000. If we take a look at the other revenue sources, uh, that's about an additional $21,000. That makes up your customer forfeited discounts, rents from some of your sewage properties, things like that. But that gives you your total revenues projected at $851,000. Then we need to take a look at, because this is cash basis, what are your expenses and CapEx costs in the next fiscal year that these rates uh, need to help finance? So when we take a look at operation and maintenance, we'll see that we've projected, and this is through management's estimates, $693,000. In addition to that, you have debt service. Uh, we've projected that the annual debt service payment for 2021 to be $121,000. Now, one thing I want you to note, that includes all your existing debt service from the end of 2020. We did have to put another debt issuance in there. If you recall, we had an advance from the electric and water utilities somewhere around this, uh, I think it was $581,000. So what we did is we created a 20-year repayment schedule, which at some point you folks will have to approve, with no interest at this point in time, 
So that recovers about 1 20th of what is owed. But that's what we use for an assumption. We then uh, have our utility finance capital additions. Now that number, if you recall, was prepared by the Public Service Commission. They determined exactly how we would calculate that. So that follows, and this entire study continues to follow what the PSC has outlined. If you recall years ago when Sensient filed a complaint, PSC said your rate study has to include these things, has to be followed this way. That's what this study does. And that's how we determine what those utility finance capital additions are. Again, sticking with that methodology. You then have an annual vehicle replacement uh, deposit, which is made here. Uh, one thing you'll note is the annual equipment replacement for the DNR. Uh, that is zero. That's because at the end of 2020, that fund was fully funded. Uh, so that's zero as of now, which was in years past. I think it was, I want to say it was uh, maybe 85,000. So that's a pretty good change. Uh, but when we put all this together, what it's telling us is that we have a deficit in our revenues of a little over $100,000, which would require overall a 12% increase, a little over 12% increase. Now one thing I did was just in case you wanted to pay that advance faster instead of 20 years, if you wanted to pay that back to the utilities over 10 years, that would increase your rate increase to 15.5%. Um, again, that's a decision you folks could make. This is uh, having it repaid over 20, just because of the significance of the increase. I just assume be conservative and try to keep that increase down if we can. So we spread it over 20 years. Certainly, we could change that. But this is the big, big driver. So then what we do, the rest of the schedules, they go through and they take all these costs, and they provide the details regarding how we came up with these amounts. But it takes those costs and it performs a cost of service study, where it will break out these costs based on, if you look at Schedule 2, it will take the expenses, the debt service, finance, capital additions, vehicle replacement. It will break those into demand-specific costs, volume costs, uh, BOD costs, suspended solids, phosphorus, and customer. And that, why that's important is we then take this cost of service and we use that to develop your rates. Uh, the biggest being your general service rates your high strength rates, and then those rank rates of sentient. So if you go to Schedule 16, this is the important schedule you'll see, based on everything in here, so it's Schedule 16, page 26, you'll see the effect on customers of this rate increase. So if we just focus on the bottom, you'll see what your present monthly rates are your volume rates, uh, your sensi and volume rates, same thing with the high strength. It'll show the monthly meter charges. And then the second column there shows what the proposed monthly rates are, 100% based on this cost of service. And just so you know, um, the last time we, we prepared this, a full study with a cost of service and rate design, was in 2017 based on a 2018 test year. Um, so this, you know, this cost of service has not been performed since 2018. Since that time, in case you didn't recall, we had a 6% increase a few years ago across the board to all customer classes, just a flat 6 increase. But the cost of service was based on the 2018 uh, increases that we put in place. So this is the first time we've gone through since 2018 and actually done a cost of service allocation. Uh, when you take a look at this here, what it shows you is it shows you the percentage change in rates. Now I mentioned we have a 12% increase in rates, but here's how it affects each of, each of the customers. You can see your small residential customers that have a, a monthly, value, monthly volume of 2,000 gallons with a 5 8 inch meter. Their bill stays well, actually goes down 11 cents. If you look at a, a larger commercial uh, that has 26,000 monthly gallons sold and a one inch meter size, you'll see that their change in their bill is at roughly an increase of 5%. When we go to Sensient, you'll see that they have a change in their bill of 44%, so a significant increase. Uh, there's a couple items driving this. Uh, one is 
if you were to look back in the 2018 study, your inflow and infiltration was roughly 38% at your utilities. Uh, the PSC uh, basically directed and said, given Sensient's location of the plant, Sensient really shouldn't have to have uh, their proportionate volume pay for all that I and I. They said they should only get a much smaller piece of that I and I charge. So they did. That was to Sensient's benefit. That was a major change that the PSC made. Well, now that I and I cost has decreased significantly to 25%. So that's to the benefit of general service because they were the customers that were paying for basically all that I and I. Sensient wasn't. So that's a big driver. But the biggest driver in here, if you look at it, is uh, since this last study, uh, sales have gone down significantly, including sentience. Uh, uh, expenses in total have gone uh, down, but not to the effect that uh, those revenues have. So when you pull all those things together, um, ultimately when it shakes out through the rates, you'll see that sentient uh, has a substantial increase in their bills given everything as it stands in forecast to 2021. It's interesting to note that in total, even with this increase in rates, Sensient will pay less than they did in the forecast of 2018. Even though the rates are much higher, their volumes and loadings are much smaller. So that had a significant uh, bearing on their rates at this point in time. Um, Alex, uh, anything else, any key points you can think of that I haven't brought out yet on the rate study itself, revenue requirement, etc.? Uh, no, I think you, you really hit most of what I had been thinking about and preparing for this. Okay. So, uh, as we mentioned before, this is only the first phase, right? This is to get our rates in, in place as soon as we can because we have step two of this increase will be uh, performed at the end of this year with the new treatment facility additions. The new contract will be in place. We'll have all those assumptions done where we can actually do a second phase of the increase. This is only the first one. So uh, given what we've presented here, you know, there's a couple options. One is you could approve this increase as is. Um, I would, I would probably, I probably wouldn't do that without letting Sensient at least having a discussion and letting them know that, hey, you know, based on the cost of service, it looks like it's a 44% increase um, because they'll say, wow, that's significant and unexpected for us, uh, they could go to the PSC and the PSC would, would probably agree and say, hey, you know, you have to give them more of a heads up. You can't hit them with this big of an increase at once. Uh, but what you can do is you can phase that in and say, hey, here's what it is and come up to some other type of increase aside from 44. Uh, I think the first step would be is getting this in front of them, letting them know here's, here, here, here's where the draft numbers lie. Do you have any questions, concerns? You know, let us know. We always have the option of just doing quickly, you know, a, a 12 percent flat across the board. Everybody pays 12 percent, just because these rates are only going to be in place for six months. Um, in essence, the residents, commercial, general service rates are probably subsidizing to some extent this sentient uh, piece, uh, but that is an option. Um, the key thing is getting sentient involved in the conversation, letting them know that hey. As things stand now with the flows and our expenses of the system, uh, you have a significant increase coming. And that will also more than likely have that significant increase when we get to January. So those are some of the scenarios that we're playing with. Um, no, I've thrown out a lot of things at you right now. So uh, I'm sure you have questions on you know, all these things. Um, any questions right now as to you know, next steps, um, where we're at? Uh, anything like that. Aaron, these are the numbers that are going to make us whole again. That's right. And give us the rate of return that we're entitled to. That, that's right. And one thing you'll know, if you take a look at the monthly meter charges, including Sensient, you'll see for the meter charges, which is good news, the fixed charges have gone down substantially. Now remember, 
when I talked about that I and I, that major decrease in I and I, those additional I and I costs were all in the past put into this fixed charge. Shouldn't say all, but a lot of them. Um, so with reducing I and I, which the utility's done a great job of, um, that has reduced the recovery needed through those fixed charges. So individuals on fixed incomes, um, they'll see their actual minimum bill or their fixed bill go down with these new rates. That piece is good. Sensing as well, you know, you'll see that their fixed charge went from 3,300 a month down to 2,775, uh, because we assume, in essence, for these purposes, that they have two eight-inch meters when it comes to the fixed charge or how we developed it. Do we have any substantiated data that shows how we've been operating in the red with sensing over a period of time? Uh, that we don't. In order to get that type of item, you would have to have a rate study for each year. Now, the last time we did that was for the forecasted test year 2018. That's when we reset the rates. We put them in a cost of service, so they were fully supported with the cost of service. We designed the rates accordingly. And if you recall, the commission elected to minimize the increase to the fixed cost, the meter charges, and put more into the volume. So that's really the only deviation we had at the time when it came to this fiscal year 2018 study. Um, since that time, since 2018, uh, sentience revenues uh, and loadings have dropped significantly. Mm -hmm. So as general service. Um, meanwhile, expenses, although have dropped, not as much as the revenues. Hence, part of the biggest reason we need an increase. But when you start taking a look at loadings and taking a look at all the costs again, you can see there's some significant cost shifts. You know, one thing to note, and we've mentioned this before, if you look at Sensient, they're basically getting, if you look at Schedule 3, if you go down to the cost, they're in essence, their rates are recovering 30% of the utilities cost, right? You'll see 282000 of the 932000 so 30% at the bottom there, bottom right-hand corner, is what those costs are recovering. If you look at Sensing's volume, however, easy place to see that would be, or an easier place to see that, you could look at Schedule 5A. Um, Sensing's volume is, uh, is it 70 million 870 gallons. Our total general service is 52,483,000. So they have well over 50% of the total volume, and they're paying 30% of the cost, you know, just to kind of put that in perspective. Now, there's many other things that go into it, right? You have your fixed costs, well, that comes through the rate charge. You have the high strength costs, you know, those things as well. A uh, couple things we noted that a lot of the loadings went down, specifically phosphorus. So when we look at the pounds of uh, phosphorus uh, for the test year, Sensian only had 690 when our total phosphorus uh, for the rest of the plant, let me check that number, was 2,213. So a significant decrease when we look to 2018. So the loadings have substantially changed um, due to process. You know, COVID may have some impact into this, uh, but the thing to remember is Based on all these changes, based on all the volumes and projected volumes and our existing costs, um, this is roughly how that shakes out on Schedule 16. Sensient's looking at a 44% increase, um, to which my guess is they would have some concern. Um, so I think at the very least we should do a discussion. They should know that. And it could be, you know, you just let them know, hey, we're going to give you an increase of X. But once it comes time for January and we have that new uh, rate increase going into effect, um, you're going to be made whole and it's going to be a significant increase, right? I mean, these are all things to discussion, but the first <coughs> thing would be just to have that general discussion to let them know this is what's, this is what's occurring. You know, or like I said, for six months, you could certainly just do, like you did with the last 6% increase, <coughs> do a 12% increase across the board, um, but again, that would be kind of increasing those general service rates disproportionately um, to what this cost of service states. So, I mean, that's a quick option. Um, path of least resistance from Sensian's point of view because they're not paying their full cost of service, but that's to the detriment to the general service. 
big thing is, you know, definitely in January when we have the new facility, we have the new debt issue, all those types of things. Uh, we're going to make some changes to the cost of service allocators. You know, that will again change this substantially January 1st. This is intended to at least get us that quick cash to get us that, at least start recovering our current revenue requirement. So, a couple things to think about. Uh, Dan, you weren't here before. Really, the only big change in the revenue requirement was we took that advance that the sewer utility received from uh, Water and Electric. It was like five, I think, five hundred and eighteen or five hundred eighty thousand dollars. We put a twenty-year repayment on that with no interest. If we accelerated that to ten years repayment, that would increase the overall rate increase to fifteen point five. I assumed you wanted to minimize that impact to some extent, so we just we, and you would have to approve that at some point in time, did a 20-year repayment with no interest. You can charge interest if you choose to. You can accelerate that repayment to 10, but just know it will increase that revenue requirement. Um, other questions? In the eyes of the PSC, and I can understand them citing the sense end because right. it's such a dramatic increase. Yep. How do they expect us to catch up? I mean, they're you're showing them the figures. We've got history here, but mm -hmm. apparently not documented history that mm -hmm. we've been working in the red on their end of things. Yeah. Now, no. In it, when we go back to 2018, that was that was set well, right? That was okay. Everyone's paying their fair share. It was 100% cost of service. 20, so basically, you're only looking at what's happened between uh, 2019, 2020, and forecast at 21. So at the very most, you're looking at three years. Uh, up at 2018, forecasted anyway. That's where it was, okay. But if you recall, loadings were higher. Volumes were higher. Mm -hmm. There's been substantial changes since then, and conservation from the public. But even though one less you know, gallon of water treated, doesn't fully equate to a perfect reduction in expense as it is the revenue, right? Some of those, that's not a perfect one for one. Um, so anytime you reduce uh, your treated water, your volumes, um, that doesn't necessarily, uh, the, the savings on that O&M doesn't really offset that decrease in revenue like you would hope it would. It just doesn't quite work that way. And have you reviewed, do, did our surcharges to them cover our costs? They, they do. In, in, in this in this cost of service model, they do. Because we were always told that they weren't, that they, and what we were hitting them up with didn't cover our, our chemical costs and what have you. Well, there is, now there's the, the question of, and this goes back to some of the things we've discussed before, um, regarding the flows and what they send. Um, it's possible, and it sounds like they, there might be slugs that get sent at certain mm -hmm. times. No, these people can yeah. attest to that. Mm -hmm. And if so that's, that's, and if that's the sure. case, well, so for instance, if we look at the phosphorus, um, do you feel that, I mean, they were billed for 689 pounds um, of phosphorus. My guess is that probably, if there were slugs coming in, that probably may not have been caught. Could that could that be that they may not have been billed for that? That's 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 the part I don't know when it comes to the sampling well, and whatnot. I guess here's my thought. So <clears throat> for 2019 and 2020, obviously COVID had a pretty drastic, I would say, impact on their flows and what they were sending us and even their production. Yeah. I mean that was pretty apparent, and I know we've had discussions with them about treating their phosphorus, and they were doing really well with that for a while. Yeah. The last three weeks we've had some pretty cons can, uh, pretty good discussions with them. They sent us some pretty good flows and some pretty bad BOD suspended solids and phosphorus for a couple of weeks. Okay. And we stayed in close contact with them and told them, hey, you need to fix this. So it had some you know dramatic effects on our plant, which we're still trying to work through. Sure. So, I mean, things like that do happen, and they were doing really well for a while, but again, that was because their production was down. Gotcha. So, I mean... It's hard for me just, you know, like to to base what we're doing, you know, like you're saying the 44% increase is going to be a big shock to them. Okay, cool. But the last two years, what they've been doing is very, 
you know, a decreased production, very decreased flow to us, but that every once in a while we just have to call them up and say, hey, what are you guys doing? Because they'll just jack the valve open and all of a sudden we're getting more flow and more solids and more stuff going on. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, you know. How do you sample them? Is it just intermittently? No, we have a 24-hour composite sampler that samples them every day. Okay. Now, we don't test them. We test them for BOD twice a week, suspended solids seven days a week, phosphorus only twice a week, and ammonia once a week. So it could be these slugs at some point get sampled. Which we, and we wouldn't know it because we don't test for it every day. Right, mm -hmm. right. So my guess is the, the, the loadings in here more than likely could be low, like six, like I, I had stated. Um, and this is, this is what we filled though, 689. Right. Well, the other concern that I have, though, is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, because I, I don't know the whole billing side of it, but we enter our lab's results, what I test for, mm -hmm. for BOD, suspended solids, pH, phosphorus, and ammonia. Mm -hmm. right. Their lab doesn't even test for BOD. They do CBOD, so we don't enter that. Right. Then they also do pH, phosphorus. They don't even test for ammonia, right. and um, they do suspended solids. So now when we do the billing, how does that work? How do we bill them? We bill for the ones that, you, that each of you test for, we bill the higher of the two readings. So if, okay. you, if our reading is higher than theirs, then we take our reading. If their reading is that is higher, daily or is that for a monthly average? What does that go by? You know what I'm saying? Like how is their bill based? Is that on an everyday on basis? A yeah, it's on a daily basis. So there are things that we don't even bill them for them that we probably test for, like ammonia and whatever. Right. Now, some of those changes that you're talking about were changes uh, to the cost of service that will be made uh, in the step two, or the next rate study for January, when we put the new, uh, the new treatment facility, when we put in the new debt service for that. We'll be making substantial changes to try to match those types of things that they're testing for as well. To, which historically just hasn't been done. Well, I know because we, we had talked to Jim Vermillion that day. I had mentioned to him that we had noticed when they had their bad couple of weeks here that their ammonias that I test for had gone up. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, maybe you should keep an eye on that and test for that every day. Okay, well, I'm, we're, as a company, we're paying for that test. So it's great that I can give you that information, but that's coming out of our pocket. You know what I'm right. saying? Like. So I guess to me that 44% increase, especially when they're going to give us slug loads like this, that's a them issue as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, because the other, I mean, we had a few days in a row where they were over half our flow. Sure. So. My question would be in this phase two of the proposed rates, it's going to go up even more, I'm assuming. I, w I would think so, because you're, so going to have, you're going to have a significant, I assume, clean water fund load to finance that project. At a minimum, um, we got to go yeah. halfway there and then give right. them the other half. Yep, and so then you're going to have O&M, additional O&M related to the new facility. Right. Uh, you may have and then the DNR replacement too, right? fund would go back. So yeah, they'll, they'll be, this is just peace. This so is the first step. We can give them 25% now, but they're going to get the other 25% in six months. And then some. You know. Yeah, more than likely. Yep. Yeah, this is the quick fix just to get you where you're at now. Um, my, so I have another question. Sure. So you said they had a favorable um, outcome in 2018 because of our high I and I that year. Mm -hmm. So during that rate study, did their rates go down? So in that 2018. Their rate, yeah, they, they, their rate stayed almost the same. So at that point in time, they had a 1.6% increase where, you know, your average residential had 15. Yes. So, so that's, but that's when loading, that's when everything was really high, right? right. They made out very well. But now that things are down. We assume they could have been included in that 15% that year. Could have. If you could wanted have. to, yeah, if you wanted to just do a, a spread it across. Yeah, that revenue requirement that year was a total of 9%. Their bill went up one. Right. Everybody else picked up the rest. You know, so it, it really does depend on, you know, the flows and loadings, and that, that's what kind of throws all these cost of service allocators around. 44% is not a far-fetched Right, you just show them the 2018 compared to if, this now. And show them that. I mean, that's one of the discussion points. You could say, hey, in 2018, you had a 10% increase. Your bill only went up 1%.
There's been significant changes in flows and, and cost of service and all those different types of things. Well, now you're at 40. But as I had mentioned before, they're, even with these, this 40% increase, they're paying less than they were in 2018 in total. Now, they'd argue, yeah, we're not sending as much. Our loadings are significantly down. We should be. That's like, well, regular costs continue. When your flows go down, and we still have fixed costs. We still have the same debt service. We still have those same costs that we've always had. Your charges, your volume charge, is going to go up. And oh, by the way, you know, you're whatever it is, 60% of the volume. So that's kind of how all these mechanisms work. Um, but, you know, good point. In 2018, you know, they got away with a much smaller increase. Um, the next increase we did, if you recall, was just a quick 6% to everybody. We didn't want to go through the full study because we knew this was coming. We are like, hey, let's just do a 6 quick 6%. Six so they took a full 6, so did the other residents. But yeah, I think that, you know, that would be an important thing to, to, to discuss with them as well. But this is the factual rate structure. And how would the PSC look at like a step increase for them with all the other users absorbing it in the meantime? I think exactly that. They would be, you know, hey, let's give them warning. If we were going to do a step, um, you know, maybe do half. And then... That's why I said if you were going 20%, 25%, 30%. Right. And they, well, during the, all that period of time during the steps, then all general public is all absorbing that. Though. Absolutely. The yep. overhead of your and operation during that time. Absolutely. And I don't want to speak for the no, PSC. Right. Chances they are, I think, already. I think, like you said, I think they'd be sympathetic to Sensi and saying, hey, it's one user, 40% increase. That's significant to the given COVID and all these. Yeah, but is that significant? Because, I mean, if they're 60% of our flow, why should the general public and small so businesses have to so have to pay for the cost of some, a company that's over half of our flow? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean... I agree. Yep, I agree. I mean, that that's the way that's I'm looking at it. Yep. <laughs> well, Aaron and I and Ross went through this one other time there, and we didn't come out on the good end yeah. either, and I think we were... <laughs> We were just as solid then as what we were yeah. now. The good news is those changes that they had recommended are all in this methodology. Um, the one thing, you know, Sensei was arguing to some of these costs as well, we shouldn't pay this much phosphorus here and there, the cost of service allocators. They were trying to argue some of those. And the PSC agreed with what we said where we're like, hey, that, that's more of an art than it is a science. PSC's like, we're not even going to look at those. We're, we're not going to touch them. We're not going to argue that. We're going to make you carve out the INI, which we did. We're going to make you cap these utility finance additions and base it on your utility plant, which we did. So all those major things they directed us to do are still done in this study. Now, you know, the big keys, which will always be, are these loadings, like your total plant flow, um, the sales we feel good about because it works out with the revenues, um, but their high strength charges. The, the, the concentrations, those types of things. Those, again, we're just putting in the data that we receive, but I recall, you know, engineers are always trying to tap into that and say, oh, this can't be right, this should be higher. But So there could be some of that too. But um, Yeah, I think step one is, I think, you know, we, we just sit down and you know, kind of present, again, this is very draft, but present it to them. Um, unless, like I said, you just for ease and purpose you just want to do a 12 percent across the board to get us there but understand um that doesn't follow the cost of service right and i will say this too uh fiscal 2022 if there's significant changes in either the general service volumes flows loadings same thing with sentient um It'll shift it back towards, more than likely, more towards how 2018 was structured, where their rates will go down, but their revenues will go up because they're sending more. There, there's more treatment. There's more flow. There's So it's kind of a yin and a yang. You know, when they go down, the rate goes up. When they go up, the rate goes down. So we just happen to be, their flows are down. Everyone's flows were down. And forecast it for 2021. How is it affected if it was, if the, everything lowered because of COVID um, and 
now they get back up to regular production? So that's, How does that play into it? That's where I was looking here. So even if you went to 2019, you're looking at 877 per meter sales. Um, industrial was 282. Yeah, that's a pretty significant, and then it's down to 215. So, yeah, you can tell COVID significantly must have affected them, right? Yeah, definitely did. Yeah. And then we could even tell by their test results. Right, which is exactly... The VODs were better, solids right. were better, phosphorus was better, it was all better. Which is, so they may argue mm. that. They may come back and say, don't set our rates at this because we're going to be much higher. We're going to be much higher going forward post COVID. But those are the types of things at this point, you know, we don't know that. If that could be, we can change that study. So this probably is the worst case scenario for them, I would say. Um, have you seen their flows and loadings go up recently? Yeah, the they're, last they're three going, weeks. They're going up. Just the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They were doing really well, and then all of a sudden, I don't know what they had go on, and we haven't figured it out yet, and I don't know that they did either. Yeah. Well, but they had an issue with the plant, and they also had an issue with the clarifier. They gave us more flow. They gave us more phosphorus. Their BODs, mm -hmm. like... They've been under construction, too, a portion of their property you now for quite a while. Oh, and, uh, they did not make us aware of that, but... Yeah, so I don't know what effect that had on production, though. I don't know mm -hmm. if it was pneumonia tanks back there or, or what they know. were doing. So, Alex, just to verify it, so we literally just looked at the latest 12 months through April. Uh, we did not adjust the forecast for significant increases from May to December of 2021, right? That's correct. Now, that's something, you know, if, if we can get an estimate of what we think the rest of the year will shape out, my guess is it's going to bring their rate down, right? And it's going to bring general service up because they're, they're flow, all these numbers, the revenues will go up, that'll minimize some of this impact, but we would have to have some sort of a good guess of, you know, you hate to do it because you're banking on it. If it doesn't happen, you're going to be short again, right? So that's why this is conservative saying, Let's assume it's going to stay the same, and we're not going to have this three-week bump that you're talking about. So that we can do that, we can increase their projected forecast of 21 loadings and volume. Just know that we we really need to hit those. I don't, I don't think we need to do that because I think whatever they had go on wasn't something they planned on. Okay. You know, I think you know, it was a uh, short-term upset. Just right. an issue. Okay. Yeah. Operator error. Sure. Yeah. Is there a way we can? cut the middle of that and do 2% for everybody and 30% for them? Absolutely, and that was something I was thinking too. You know, after you talk to Sensi, you, you could say, hey, look, it's 40, but, you know, we're only going to hit you with 20. Um, we, we, could get, we could do 40, but we understand. We understand there's COVID. There's, we understand more than likely your volumes will go up. Um, again, and it's only six to seven months, right, when we have a new study in. We can see where it falls then. We'll have some better data, you know, that'll get us through at least, you know, depending when we do the test year, although we'll be looking at fiscal year 2022 more than likely for that rate study. So we'll really be trying to get our arms around what does a normal year look like for them and general service in 2022. I mean, that'll take a little bit of work on our part to try to come up with our best guesses here and talk with them to find out what they think too. Uh, but the big thing is, it'll look at some of those allocators you were talking about. It'll bring in this new debt service, which is going to be substantial. That'll split out what should Sensient pay of this, what does the contract say. It'll bring in those new contract terms. So that, that's going to be a much uh, much bigger analysis than what this uh, pretty basic, hey, let's just get the revenue out there that we need. I think that's going to be the best success, what the PSC is, doing what Alex kind of said. Change the percentage to the general slightly and lower cost to sentient somewhat, mm -hmm. where it's not as drastic, but yet still covering your costs and adjustments can be made then. Yeah. I mean, it is showing that, hey, you know, we could have went to 40, understand with right. everything going on, mm -hmm. we're going to 20, but this gives you six to seven, eight months that no a larger increase more than likely is coming. Um, regardless, um, and it will be definitely determined by your flows, since you're very significant to this. Uh, if your flows stay low, you know, the increase will stay high. If your flows pick up a little bit, 
the, the rates themselves would, would minimal less of an impact than if those flows and loading stay super low. Alex, Mike, you, you think I'm characterizing all that? You, any other thoughts on that? Again, some of this is projection, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, we, we still have everything, you know, within the report to, to very easily adjust our forecasted flows if we do have estimates of, of what those would change by, and that would flow through the, the rest of the calculations very easily. Um, but, yeah, again, as, as Aaron said, we've, we've kept it all the same to stay very much on the conservative side. Yeah, and Tom Unke has been our mouthpiece as far as our negotiations. Is he fully aware of, of these yep. projections? Yep, I, I had a discussion with him today, and he was talking some about some of the contract updates and whatnot that he had. Um, you know, he and I talked about, hey, here's what we're going to present. He had the same thoughts. Yeah, be careful. The PSC would probably side with them again about don't hit them with everything. Um, but, I mean, they also need to know yeah. this is the number. Um, he, he, the big thing that, you know, he, he, he said as well is, you know, if anything, they need to know on notice that this is coming some way, shape, or form. It could be a substantial increase, you know, giving you lots of time here. Um, we may or may not hit you with all of it now. Probably not. But in six, seven, eight months, something, you know, this gives you time to plan, right? Um, so if theirs goes down to 20%, how does that affect the rest of the general public as far as their bills? How much more would that increase them? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like yep. if we're going to give them a break, what yeah. is everybody else going to have to pay? I'd have to run the, I'm trying to think. You'd have to run the numbers. I don't know. Alex, are you able to run something really, really quick to even get a glimpse of what that might be or not in the model? I, I only could hear that question oh. was kind of breaking in and yeah. out. So, so the question is, within the model, if we cap Sensian's increase at 20% instead of, let's say, 40, what 40. is the, what would the effect be on the rest of the general service customers? Obviously, it varies based on meter size and how large they are, but, you know, um, not mm -hmm. sure. I mean, we can get that number, certainly. I just didn't know if you could quickly get a ballpark, hey, that'll probably put them around instead of where are they at now? Anywhere between 1% and 4, it'll put them between 5% and 10. That would be a really quick guess by me. So roughly maybe double theirs. Yeah, you just double up breeze percentage, right? Be kind of yeah. It's not quite as easy, right. as, but yeah, um, that number could take could take a day to fix. I mean, more than twenty percent you lose, and since the rate class has to be spread across all the other right. Right. users. Yeah, I mean, that's and then yeah, it's easy to yeah, just trying to figure out okay, what's that percentage? <coughs> with those individuals on the bill. Yeah, you got all different rate classes. But right. I mean, it's still. Yeah. yeah. And I can understand the PSC looking at it. That's a heck of an increase for them, but does that justify us making everybody else make up for it? You know, that, right. You know, you got all the other rate classes then yeah. subsidizing what you lost. You know, you, yeah. you know this is where it's supposed to be, 40%. Yeah. I don't know how the PSC can look at that favorably, right. that you're penalizing everybody else that's in the system yeah. to subsidize the, you know, while you're doing a step increase for sensing. Yeah. And especially when we've had <coughs> three years right. of subsidizing them already, you know, even See? though if we don't have solid ground, you know, or, or uh, data to back that yeah. up, you know, that we've I the really think it's, but I, I think it's quite true that we Yeah, I really think unfortunately it's the, it's this COVID year, it's this low. I mean, this is this is their worst case scenario right here. Um, they weren't in it before. Their rates were good in twenty eighteen and then they slowly got a little bit out of balance. This is the bottom of the out of balance. I could see the PSA saying, Well, in a year or two it's gonna change, so you don't 
And then, like, but part of it is, yeah, well, we're also doing a second phase increase here with all these big changes coming. So we're going to be taking a look at it again. It's not like they're going to be held to this if their flows change substantially. Right. Now, getting our arms around, you know, what is what does sensing it project in 2022? You know, we, we definitely have some have to work with them to figure that out. Um, and if you go high, um, and it doesn't come through, you're short again. So, so if the PSC sides with sentient, does that just restart negotiations, or are we just dead in the water, or what it's do we uh, get? <laughs> well, it's it's a pretty long process. For one, they'd have to file. PSC would look at it. There could be hearings. And that's why it would just, I mean, so in the meantime, you could be... three months again. Right. And the, well, in the meantime, you could be charging them, if I recall. We were charging them. And at yep. the end of it, did we have to refund? Was there a big no, refund, you recall? Refund. Or they just changed it going forward? Yeah. So, but... So you're I mean, potentially losing out, though, on... Yeah. You're losing ground. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to overstep and then get checked. And that there's a good chance the PSC would be sympathetic, saying, hey, 40%. Not that you can't get it. It's just trying to get it like that. So who has these conversations? Is it Tom that has these conversations? It would conversations? be Tom that we're doing now. I mean, uh, to, like, notify him? And the last argument was when we, how many years ago was it, Aaron, when we had to appear before the PSC board? It had to be, like, at least 20, 2010. 2011, maybe? Yeah, I mean, their argument at that time, we didn't give them adequate notice, even though a year before, and, they, and they've got a lot more, I don't want to say competent people in charge here, but yeah. more, a better business head, I think, than what they had at that time. That time, sure. they were just looking for anything they could stonewall us with yeah. to avoid the increase in rates yeah. and what have you. But, it wasn't pretty when we had to go down there and we all yeah. did testimonial yeah. and what have you. I mean, it went from 100% contracted rates for 20 years. That contract was done. We continued to follow the contract methodology, and that's where they're like, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, why don't we change this? And they threw everything out there, and the PSC said, yep, yeah, all sounds good. Pretty much everything, yep. Yeah. Just because we didn't have the contracted rate methodology anymore. I think we're in a better position now. Oh, much, position much better. Now for yeah, argument. yeah. And I think even in, if you look at the full 2018 study, you know, we have a narrative that says, hey, this takes into consideration all those pieces from at the Public Service Commission um, wanted addressed. But it's never slammed on. No. Yeah. Um, Yeah, the of course the I and I. So significant reduction in I and I. We've been doing. Have we just been improving main breaks, or could it be some of the readings? It's the first time I'm hearing that our I and I <laughs> went down. Yeah. Well, we did find some leaks. Correct me if I'm wrong, Peter. When we did that street project last year and had to replace some of those valves that we think were leaking, right. and there could be more of those. There was several of them. So right. There's more. Oh, I know that. That's what I'm saying. I think that was a big part of it because. Like when we went to shut those off and they didn't shut off, I mean, there was significant water underneath the ground there. And once those valves got replaced, it seemed like that's when I and I started going down then already. Mm -hmm. So it was finding its way to the sanitary system. Apparently. Well, it's the only way. Well, the only it's leaks. the only way. Yeah. It's yeah. got to go through right. your meters, yeah. so, you know, that's the only way. Those wow. leaks, if they found their way to the ditch, that would have affected you. Dry your water. I guess, Mac, I guess you're going to have to have a sit down with Tom Monkey and you're going to have to, you're going to have to meet with sentient officials again and see how this is all received and play the poker game. That's about all well, I can say. I hate like heck this part of 20% then. I'd rather start high. Well, that's my thought. See, see what their reaction mm -hmm. is and try and explain the methodology on how we're going to do this over a period of time, you know, and right. explain the, the flows related to the fixed costs and what have you, too. But I don't know. It'd be nice to have that information as to, like, say, if you charge them 35 or raise them 35%, how that affects the other oh, group for sure. compared to 30% and 25 and 
Yeah. You don't have a yeah a comparison there. Yeah, I was, I was thinking thirty percent. Thirty percent that leaves ten percent. We can you know, if you can get thirty percent rather than then you have ten percent of the cost going back on the rate sure. payers. Sure. But still, I'm as being a rate payer, I'm right. <laughs> So in terms of, I'm not happy. <laughs> one, one question I have right for you folks and go from it, there this and time, when you have these discussions with Sensient, are you okay with these draft schedules, stamp draft, or do you want us to take additional time to put all the uh, report verbiage in, explaining the assumptions? I mean, we, we can easily do that. That just takes a little bit more time. Or do you want to at least say, hey, Let's start with this, and oh, by the way, you know, once we figure out everything going on, we can pull this together. I'm just thinking of continuing to expedite this. Um, I don't know how quickly we can get that meeting with them, but I assume we'd be okay discussing this. And of course, they'll want to see some of the verbiage and the assumptions, which we'll get them. But I just don't know how fast we can talk to them because I know times of the essence to get this increase put into place. I guess this would be the, you know, as soon as Tom and I can get together. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. And I think what we'll do, just, just for purpose here, um, Alex, let's uh, that's pull together just the, the, the verbiage. Just use 2018's, pull together, revise it, update it. That should be pretty quick. Again, it's still draft. Um, we'll, go, we'll go from there. Okay. Um, again, appreciate everyone's help on jumping to pull this together. Um, big thing here is, you know, continue, you know, continue to double check. Just make sure that we have the loadings and statistics right in here, um, because that could have a, a, a significant, uh, you know, that could change these things significantly if those aren't right. Okay. Um, then moving. Oh, I guess that. You moving to that first or second piece to talk about the street lights? I did ask Aaron, um, Nick, I guess you kind of moved that to the finance committee the other night and I wanted to know what the what the change would do to both the utility or the city. So I reached out to Aaron knowing how we how we're set up here. Um, presently, what is it? Almost half and half? Yeah. Uh, it's slightly more heavily on the utility, um, but it's for safe, for easy saying, yeah, half and half. And historically, when we've taken over, and when I sat in Robert's chair over there, I tried to shift as many of the street lights over to city ownership because I thought it was for the benefit of the of the utility and what have you. Presently, we're we're structured with the with uh, the lights that we take over, we have sole ownership. We pay maintenance to the utility when they have to be serviced or repaired or what have you. Utility lights are leased to the city, you may as well say, with a monthly service charge. And um, then the utility takes care of maintenance on them. So at the end of the year, there's a pilot payment, payment in lieu of taxes, which uh, the city gets from the utility for their infrastructure, <laughs> all, all the wire, all the poles, all the, the heads. So what I wanted to do is, where's the balance there? We give up one, do we lose on the other? And I guess I'll hand it over to Aaron on what, what historically yeah. has been done. No, you, you make, um, make all great points. Uh, I did reach out to the PSC um, when Dan had reached out. I, I'm still waiting to hear back from them. but. Uh, from the utilities I work with, you know, my understanding is almost all utilities, you know, the utility pays for them, the utility maintains them, keeps them on their books, and uh, uh, makes a payment in lieu of taxes on that value to the city. Um, I really haven't seen it split. I really haven't seen it where the where the city owns those. Um, not saying it's right or wrong either way. Uh, the big thing is, you know, the payment in lieu of taxes. The city takes it. Um, the city's going to be losing payment low taxes, which, you know, a quick and dirty calc on what you have now could be anywhere between two to five thousand, and that's just what's on the books right now, including what the city has now on theirs. 
easy to fix it if you want to bring the cities back on. You know, you just talk to city auditors, we just pull that infrastructure back on, move it at its netbook value. So um, I would probably, you know, I would probably have the utilities to keep it clean, put it all back with the utility, or, you know, leave what you've done now. Certainly you can do that. I wouldn't move everything to the city. Again, it's just a personal preference. It's it's being comparative to your neighbors. And that's not say, not say you can't. No, and that's fine. I the, the whole reason behind looking into this is it was a a billing nightmare as far as doing maintenance on. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason for what streetlights were city owned and what streetlights were utility owned. So right. you'd go out and oh, it'd be hard. Yeah. So <laughs> you know whether what. You know, who owns them? Trying to, I mean, that's right. The, trying to figure out who's supposed to pay it. Now. It's it's more of a being you know simple as far as yeah who has the ownership and going forward with things. So right, that, you know, um, that makes perfect. And I think to your point, that's more than likely why all, all, all the neighboring communities have done it that way. Just kept it with the utilities and moved that way. Um, the only thing I don't know is if the PSC has any, I guess, authorization to say the city shouldn't own those. Um, that part I don't know. I don't think they do, but I wanted to clarify with them just to be sure, just because I haven't seen it a lot. Well, I'm sure they look at it as long as we were paying a per fixture fee every month and the utility owned it, they were somewhat whole, we were somewhat whole. But now I did reach out to Todd Tessman in Houstonsburg. Mm -hmm. Now he's about 50 50 over there. Oh, he does it and of course, how did that happen? He yeah. said when they had uh, got state funding for some of those street projects that they came in, that oh. they funded some of them were uh, like 75% of the cost, the upgraded street lighting system. Oh, and gotcha. So that's how that fell into that. His sure. hands. But they also have two rates. When, okay. the, uti when the utility owns, owns the light, they have a lower per KW oh, rate, sure. Sure. and yeah. then uh, the other way around. Well, I told him, I says our KW rate for the, the street same, lights right? all the way across the board. Yeah. So you could even have more of a bookie. Yeah, I right? wondered <laughs> about that. Yeah, like when WPPI does your, you know, your rate studies and whatnot. I, you know, that's probably one thing that they and the PSC hasn't looked at doing right. that. Because my guess, they don't know. Right. They yeah. just look at oh, you got street lights of. You know, X, whatever it is. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's Todd told rate. me that the city-owned ones are even higher than their general rate structure for, yeah. for the rest of their customers right. across right. the board. Right. But for the utility-owned ones, the rate structure is much lower than the... Than the <laughs> so I don't know, understand how that shakes out. I wouldn't want to get in that, keeping the, the rate structure for all the, the street light consumption. Yeah. Is what I think we should do. We certainly shouldn't change that. But... But like I said, I just didn't know how that was going to shake out with the payment in lieu of taxes versus, I mean, if it's a wash, if it comes out the same as what we're paying the utility every month, multiply yeah. that times 12 for the rental of the lights, well, <laughs> right. then it only makes sense to do that. But uh, I wanted to make sure, now I'm sitting on the other side of the fence, so I want to make sure that I represent both sides equally so that yeah. we're sitting in a, a position that one entity is isn't subsidizing the other entity right. and everything's done properly right. so yeah but yeah our system had been each time we took over we did a street project and installed new lights then the city would take those over pay for the the cost of the new lights and the installation it was sure. theirs yeah and then the only thing but that the we utility maintained and you just sent them a bill right yeah. well they were supposed well, to but that, that oh, got more bills therein lies yeah, yeah. I mean, and therein lies uh, yeah. it's easy yeah. to mess right yeah yeah, that got sidetracked a little bit without <laughs> without cause or without asking, you know, what for. So. so I guess, yeah, I guess the big thing is if there's any spotting of areas that the city owns the lights or something like that, that we've got some commingled or something, that, if you could clarify that and clean that up. I, I can't see us selling them all back to the utility. I think that's a hardship for them. But as I so told Aaron when we talked about this on the phone, I said the utility is in a much better financial shape to own the util own the street lights than the city is. Yeah, that's what that's why the whole payment in with tax has popped into my head. I mean, you can adjust rates just about any time. And one thing about the utility, everybody gets benefit from the street lights. Well, there's a lot more utility customers than what there are taxpayers. So if you look at it that way, you know you're dividing the costs you know, amongst, a, amongst a, a broader base than what you are, you know, just 
taxpaying entities. You know, you got everybody that lives in apartments and everybody, you know, throughout, you know, all to get benefit from the street lights as well. So another way to look at it, I guess. So you're saying it w the likelihood of the city selling them to the utility wouldn't happen either? Well, I, I don't know. We'll have to discuss that at finance or something like that. But they, I know this way. I guess once Aaron gets gets a clarification from the PSC whether which way we should be going, I guess uh, yeah. what we were doing is trying to take some of that burden away from the utility. But you know now it's gotten if it clearly says that's that's not the proper way to do it. You know, something different or yeah. remain as we are right now. I'll see, to, to your point about uh, Houstisford, if the PSC is giving separate rates, um, my guess is, like, like I thought, more than likely we probably can, but then one thing, my guess, and I haven't looked at your rate structure and how uh, your cost of service was prepared, but my guess is you would have to let WPPI know that so they could craft those dual rates that you were talking about before. My guess is they just know I knew, right? PC didn't know. Okay. I mean, PPI probably just said, you know, well, here's, we have street lights on your books, and away you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. That's my guess, I, I, again. Um, but uh, I can confirm. I'll, I'll get a hold of her. I left her another message today, and if not, I'll try a different, a different contact there. Appreciate it. Good. And she might have some insight into what communities do, like I said. I think it's the exception from what I've seen, but you know, if you found Houston's heard there's one. Mm -hmm. um, and as an audit, you know, there could be more. The hard part is being able to tell, right? Yeah. Um, unless you ask the question. Well, okay. I think a lot of this with the LED lighting upgrade probably has had some impact on, you know, sure. cities, well, cities jumping on board and saying, hey, if we can, we can cut our uh, our uh, oh, electric, electric yeah. consumption by. By 75%, we'll you know, whatever, yeah. we'll pay for it. And that might have been the, uh, yeah. you know. Yep. Okay, well, I'll look into that one, and I'll get back to you. Um, I'll let Lori know what, what, I, what I find out from that. Appreciate that. Okay. okay, and also, I can also, uh, are you going to reach out to Tom? I, I can as well, and just let him know that, you know, that's the hope. Is I will find it. I don't have his number, so okay. I'm, right, I can let him know. I usually do emails with him, but yeah. Okay. You guys are all in the same shop. Sounds good. I'm sure there's going to be questions for for you that I won't be able to answer. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. My guess is maybe that I guess and I. Dom's a pretty good poker player. I would send him in there and see what he can do. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks, Alice. I appreciate it. If you're still there. He hung up when it got yeah. the street. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's there. All right. Take care. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks appreciate the it. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Monthly business. Approve the vouchers and checks. I'll make the motion to approve the vouchers and the checks. Second. Motion by me. Yeah, motion by me. <laughs> by Mac and second by Ross. Is there any questions on it? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved. Uh, prior month income statement. Questions on any of that? Council acts affecting the utility. Resolution 23, 2021, approved compliance maintenance annual report. I'm sure it passed. Yes. I see your name on there, so I know. 
uh, consumption and loss. Uh, and we're down on uh, sewage and water pumping, which is good. Electricity remained the same. No leakage. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on consumption and loss? Totals of delinquent customers. That number actually probably went down even more than what's shown. Um, because there's been a lot of payments that are have been missing. We changed the mailing. The mail now comes to the building instead of the P.O. box. And so there's been a, a time lapse there of getting the mail here, so um, we got a number of payments in yesterday, or to, over the weekend and today, that aren't reflected in that report, so I'm okay. sure that that's helped. That's good news. Any other, anybody have any questions on any of that? If not, utility accountant. Um, the, I had included in your packet the resume that I received through Indeed. We had the ad on a couple of the websites for the rural water and the other website there's out there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, WWA. For the, yeah, WWA. Um, thank you. <laughs> and we didn't get any responses from any of that. So then Max said to put it on Indeed. We did that, and we've got the resume from that Brett Lind, I believe his name was. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you guys had a chance to review that. And then we also had received a resume from Nick as far as creating a utility director position, and he would oversee both of the departments, I believe, is how that was planned on going, or uh, the, uh, that was your intent, or how was that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if there's any place else that we can advertise, or how you guys want to move forward with trying to fill the position, or... I, I think we're going to have to look at uh, maybe doing some, have a personnel meeting this month and go over and see what we can hash out. I don't know how else to, we can't get anybody to apply for the position. Uh, what do we do? Do we go to four operators and See that how that works. Make one a lead operator and go from there. And you would work every fourth week rather than every third. If that works, I, if that's how that was, I was that was my thoughts. I don't know if that's the way it would work out or not. My only thought with that, I mean, not that working every fourth weekend would be wonderful, but. Um, you still have to have somebody who's going to do paperwork. the paperwork and be responsible for budgets and dealing with phone calls and all kinds of that. So you still need a superintendent or a director or something. Because a lead operator, quite honestly, with what our pay scale is and what they would make, that's not enough money for the job they'd be doing. That's my opinion. Just and thought. I'm just I saying. I was. I was just a thought on my part too. Nope. And, and, I, and I. I mean, I get it. I just. There's. There's a lot of things out there that can't be handled by just a lead operator. And if that's the case, then you would have to significantly increase that wage. So. 
would kind of come down to how you're going to shift responsibilities because, you know, and especially how the pay change would, because you can't have someone doing the superintendent job as a lead operator and then only give the director 5% of the superintendent's yeah. responsibilities, you know. So you'd have to have a director that's capable of overseeing so I mean, everything. There's a lot of ways to but I think we'd have to sit down and discuss it and say I wouldn't you would be in the wastewater operators would be invited to the meeting and get your input because we got to do something how long have we been advertising for this position um, first ad went on hmm, I want to say it was beginning of the first week in June we went onto the websites and then July 1st we posted in Indeed. I think it's been longer than that. It was like mid-May. Yeah. Yeah, I was right before Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend. So it was around the 20th or something, I think, somewhere there. I don't know. It was, you're right though, it was in May that it went on the websites. But Indeed was just July 1st. I think you should have a personnel meeting and and uh, discuss it there. All right. May be a short one again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the other point I wanted to bring up is. Um, Discontinuing taking the utility payments at City Hall. We still have a handful of, or probably two handfuls of people that keep dropping their payments off up there. And um, we don't always get those payments on time in a, or a timely fashion when they get them. And then by the time it gets to us, depending on who goes up there and gets our mail and whatever, um, we just felt that. If someone drops a payment off there, they can easily just come over here and drop the payment off in our drop box. The issue happens when a payment is dropped off and a past due um, fee is implemented on oh, the bill. Right. Because right. um, that just happened where some of the mailings wasn't um, received from City Hall and there was like, what, four? for accounts were administered a late fee even though technically it was at City Hall because we are accepting at this time payments at City Hall for some reason. I know that was discussed that the city as a whole we should all be working together but yeah. everybody yeah. knows where the utility offices is. We don't accept dog registrations here. Right and the police department doesn't <coughs> accept tax payments and you know I mean so. it's just like they pay at the department that they belong to and Obviously, a letter would go out to the people that are dropping um, payments off to City Hall, notifying right. them that you know there wouldn't be, won't be accepting payments anymore that are dropped off at City Hall. That, well, that way, there's a probably a letter should be with included in the bill to everybody. That's true. True. Yeah, yeah. we were, we were planned, planned on putting a note on, put a note on the in on the bill itself. There's a place for comments, so we could put it mm -hmm. there. But it's the same people every month. Um, I don't know for sure, but it is, it is pretty much, yeah. I so we can, and we've tried, I think in the past, Kylie said that we tried sending letters out saying that the payment should be made here, and that didn't seem to affect anyone. So, um, but we thought if we put a note on the drop box saying that please take your, you know, that they're no longer accepting payments there for the utility to drop it off here. They can certainly mail it still, they can pay online, there's other ways to get the payment to us. When we do go through disconnects on that list, I always make sure I go up to the city hall to make sure we get all the payments before we do disconnects, but, um, you know, we just works out in a perfect world. Right. <laughs> the will be a $10 fee if they send it to city hall instead of here. Or it can be your $40 reconnection. Yeah. I guess I noticed going to and going out with the utility bills, and if we have the same people that are the ones, maybe a letter to 
say that City Hall will not be accepting them anymore. Are they dropping them in the Dropbox? Yeah, I think for the most part they're in the Dropbox. So it's an after hours thing? Yeah, probably yeah. the last day of the month. Is there any label on there telling them not to? There no, not, not, at, this not at this point. Okay. I mean, we did that when we first when switched, and then moved. there was a couple of utility commission members at that time that didn't like that, that we were posting on City Hall that we wouldn't be accepting utility payments there. That's why we're bringing this up again to get the support of the utility to have utility payments be delivered to the utility office. Are they still receiving them at the banks too yet? Uh, landmark. Except I thought that was an issue that sometimes they didn't get. That is correct. Last month we had two payments that we didn't know that came through because we didn't get the receipt from Landmark. So it's up to Landmark to pick them up, mm -hmm. to drop them off down here? No. No, they give me the receipt when I go and drop the deposit off. Oh, okay. So if you don't drop the deposit off in a given day, they could be late? Correct. No, because we would still have the date that they made the, the oh. check payment. Okay. Unless it would happen on that day of... Right. Yes, I thought action. that was all computer generated that they'll shut out those stone code notices. But I think that's the way to have. send out a letter noticing them. Yeah, we're not sending letters to people that still drop them off. Yeah. So then what if they still drop them off there? Yeah. <laughs> say that say that you're gonna do it, you know, as of September first, you're supposed to drop them off here. What if they still drop them off at the yeah. city hall? Yeah. I wouldn't give them a the date. Way. I would say it's effective Definitely. immediately. They need to be dropped off here. Right. Can you just put a? I mean, I don't know how bills are printed, but can a statement just be put right on the bills and there's bold? A, there's yeah. A there is, but yeah. nobody there reads is. this stuff. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. why you're gonna have to send the letter to the people that keep doing it. Right. Well, I. Hey, you can play hardball, and you, I, my crew would go there for disconnections. You <laughs> knock on the door and. <laughs> Yeah. Payment was received. <laughs> yeah. We're supposed to be a community. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Hey, we're giving a curse enough. We don't do it to anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I think the letter will try that first. Yeah. And, and the notice with the bills. Uh, if that doesn't work, then we have to go to something else. But state that after this date, the city hall will not be accepting payment. I mean, we're, now we're producing bills that are in a uh, business say size letter. On the, when you I mean, send doing a bill, it should be effective immediately. City Hall is no longer accepting utility bills. Right. So when and customers I, drop off at City Hall, how do they do that? Is there a drop box? Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like this. Like drop box. Can it just be locked that they can't open it? Well, they got yeah. people they got drop City Hall it's permits. Just a, it's a oh. shelf lock thing that they stick it in? Just like here. Can you put a big sticker on the outside of it that says right. no utility bill? That's what I said that's earlier. What we, yeah, that's, I think you were in the bathroom. The bathroom. Sorry. And we had there, that discussion. There, <laughs> was, there was that up there. Yeah, and then the, the worker up there took it down because she didn't like it. But mm -hmm. so seeing how now they're, they're, the utility bills come in a business envelope. Take an eight and a half by eleven paper and big bold print. Yeah. All yeah. utility billings are can only be delivered to the utility office, so that they actually open that up. It's part of their bill, mm -hmm. not that it's incorporated on the print of the bill, because it'll never get seen. If it's right. a separate piece of paper, yeah. and like I said, yeah, half inch high letters all the way across. The only place that utility bills are to be delivered is at the utility office at right. one hundred. Lincoln Avenue or Lincoln Drive? What is it here? Drive. Drive. Okay. Yeah. And, and they can be mailed in or whatever right. too because <laughs> or else people will be, okay. what do you mean you can't mail them in? <laughs> Anything else? That was all I had. All right. Nick? <sighs> so we replaced some more poles out on the, the goose trail. Um, our digger derrick should be completed here the next week or so. So I've been working on getting uh, the digger Derek ready to go on the Wisconsin Surplus website. Um, we are continuing our line inspections. Uh, we got a full 
full five days worth of uh, work and doing those and we got half the system done so we uh, hope in another five days we can find uh, between jobs and we can get that done with um, during the inspections we found some junction boxes that are out uh, in our rural systems that uh, we had a brush cut around um, with our sub inspection this month we found a bad thermocoupler that's in our um, regulator control and a battery, backup battery for a recloser control failed, as well as a hotline switch. Um, a hotline switch in our reclosers, what that allows is it's a safety function that you can put on a circuit where if we are uh, performing work on the line, if some sort of accident were to happen, um, that circuit trips immediately. It's like a no tenth of a second so it saves you know the hopefully the person working on it but that's kind of a lifeline switch that we use when we're working on different circuits and we were having issues uh, we were operating that switch and it wasn't coming on wasn't wasn't engaging the rest of the control was working um, so we killed power to the control uh, we restored power to the control we operated the switch a couple more times and all of a sudden it started working. So now we're kind of don't trust the re circuit uh, hotline switch. So we're having AC engineering coming in anyways because they got to look at that thermocoupler anyways and uh, to look at that, that control since it is a si significant tool um, or part of our system as far as circuit protection. Uh, ultimately that protects our transformer in the, in the substation which is our our mother head of our system that we gotta make sure is is working properly so we're gonna have AC engineer come in and take a look at that um, we're performing our prep work right now for our new distribution line to feed the uh, dead end side of East Oak or East Oak Street for um, feeding East Oak a different direction uh, for when that street project would take place and removing that overhead system to underground so um, once our once all of our materials here and our ticket clears uh, we have to call in another ticket uh, that will clear next week uh, we'll perform that uh, we completed the 480 street lane conversion uh, up on East Oak Grove replaced that transformer out to a 12240 transformer and did the 15 fixtures. It took us about five hours to, to complete all of it. Uh, we had four disconnects. Two, two of them remain out. Um, this month I, I work closely with our shared meter technicians from WPPI and uh, part of our AMI system, uh, water and electric, uh, we get these reports that come in if, if meters are communicating wrong or are missing interval data or whatever the case may be and uh, some of the meters for the water were giving back some bad interval data reading uh, there were chunks of, of data missing and um, so WPPI wanted to get some more knowledge in it and working with me and working on the, the task together and uh, we kind of had to reprogram or remake all new programs for our new handheld. We then did a meter audit on the, all the water meters. Um, there's about 20, 22 meters that are in question as far as if they're a program right um, and I already went and checked a couple of them already and they have been right they weren't programmed wrong because um, I thought maybe with the ones that were flagged as programmed wrong may have had a little bit to do with um, the water loss that we've been having um, so then I did some more digging and uh, asked Laura to see if she was able to find data from when um, this big loss happened when it wasn't in conjunction with our AMI meter changeouts or was it something else and I'm sure most of us remember the water tower incident 
is directly related to that water tower being dumped onto the system. So there is no question that there's definitely some leaks on the system that, that need to be, and Peter and I, we talked a little bit already, and he's going to be talking about it more. Um, but, you know, with going through that meter audit, we did find some errors, um, small errors, but they are, are getting uh, accomplished and completed. So, And then on July 4th, Peggy gave me a call. She was wondering if there was any power um, issues going up on well three. Um, so I drove in, checked out the well. Um, she showed up and we uh, kind of tackled it together. We did some troubleshooting, uh, verified that the well did have power, the fuses were good. Uh, we went through um, the panels, uh, got it to operate on hand, then kind of verified that it was a communication issue. Um, Peggy went back to the treatment plant and restarted. Turned uh, it to off. Turned it to off. And yep, and then put it back in auto, made sure Nick was ready at the well house, and I called him, we put it back in auto, and it did its thing, it ran, and everything was fine. So, so I don't know if it was a radio glitch or a SCADA glitch, because our SCADA system is, we are still waiting for the upgrade for that, so um, we haven't received that as of yet, so I'm not sure if it's just, you know, from time to time that happens, because I know Dan, he said he called you, and you said that happened once before at another well, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, I, we never really got an answer, you know, as to why that happened. I mean... I think Tim mentioned it happened once before and might have called LWLM, but they didn't really have a good reason for him, so um, we didn't call him after this time yet, but I'm assuming the answer would be the same as, you know, who All knows, right. you know? Either so way, it was a good little training session, too, as far as troubleshooting the wells and figuring out, you know, point A to point B, where's your issue, so that worked out well, got it up and running, and didn't have to shut that one off and have... Well, two, right? Yep. Well, two, well, right? Two in, then, yeah. Um, that's all I got. Anybody have any questions for Nick? If not, Peter. All right. Well, I'm looking into. Um, I contacted American Leak Detection in, in Ferguson to get some information on uh, water leak um, correlator services. Um, doing this instead of uh, purchasing a correlator, um, we could treat it such as um, like we do the, uh, the collection system, pick a portion of the city, 20%, um, whatever, and then just have them come in and canvas that area to look for leaks. Um, so I'm, I contacted them earlier in June and I'm still waiting to hear back from them so I did email them uh, last week so I'm still waiting to hear but do we have any kind of uh, guess on what on how much that would cost because cost? Cost? Mm -hmm. I, I really have no idea no I gave them all the information um, the amount of pipe the size uh, the type and how many valves and hydrants we have so I don't Peter, do you really remember busy. what I told you? Because I called Tim um, Huchar from Manville to get those contacts, and I think he told me they did. Well, obviously, Teresa is considerably smaller than Juno, but I thought he told me that they did all of Teresa for like $5,000 maybe. Hmm. Well, so that's know. not a horrible amount of money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many. Well, I don't know because we have such a substantial loss. Do you do the whole system this year, and then you start budgeting for year on after that for I'm, a portion I don't know, that's why I'm... Well, or the other out. thing is if we have an area of town where we know we have those bad valves, like what we found when we did the construction project, if you would start, you know, even if you did a quarter of it a year and start in the area where you know you have some of these same types of valves and you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know that we have that information or how we would know that, but I mean, just a thought. I know when that water tower was dumped I mean, there was no rhyme or reason where things were breaking. I mean, oh, I don't doubt that you have water everywhere. It was ever, everywhere. So I'm just, I mean, I got a feeling it's going to be spread out. Um, How much was budgeted for a uh, twenty-four thousand? But I was just kind of waiting to get some information to yeah. see what they would charge. I mean, if we could do the whole city, that would be great, and then start over from there. 
Well, I think if you don't do the whole city, at least in a timely fashion, you're going to be chasing your tail because then there's going to be reoccurring leaks behind the section that you already checked that was good right. and what have you. So, oh, yeah, we ran into that. Yeah, I fix, guess fix uh, whatever section. you can do to try and get it, it budget it, you know, you got 24000 it's a good start. Get that done through whatever you can spend on it this year, and see how much. I would say twenty-four thousand would probably pretty much wrap out the whole town. I would think. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, we're probably three times the size of Theresa, probably in amount right. of meters and amount of uh, services and what have you. But uh, I think so, I think it's important. I agree with Nick there that uh, the whole system was compromised when that. I mean, anything that had a weak a weak uh, vein and it popped. I mean, when you start blowing it out of toilets at the county facilities and what have you and shooting porcelain up to the ceilings and whatever, you know how much the pressure we had running through the system at that that's time. No, that's no lie. Like it happened. No. Yeah, that's, that's oh, an exaggeration. That happened. That was what, 2015 or no, 13? For the water tower? No, 2015. I, I guess yeah, I, I think know. it was 2015. I'm more wrong there. So, so um, what's the, I would like to know what's the advantage of having outside service do it yearly as opposed to having our own co-relator and having our guys do it? Well, well I don't think experience. it would be, you know. Time and experience. We don't have the time. I think it would be the experience, but then eventually it's not going to be this as you know, extensive. aggressive and extensive as, you know, once you do the initial one and then start budgeting for smaller portions. Yeah, I know, but if you budget, I mean, yeah, if you do the, the big all city one, then you do 20% of the city every every year, that, that's but tough. you can burn up a lot I of mean, money too. You're going to notice, I mean, yeah, if you, if you fix all your losses. leaks and things, well, not all of them, but you know what I'm saying, if you fix the majority of your leaks and your water loss goes down, you wouldn't necessarily have to do 20% oh, right. of your town every year because if your your water loss is that low, would you necessarily have to monitor it every year? You know well, what I'm saying? Your losses and then yeah, I mean, it's just, I think you could kind of base it on, you know, if our water loss is considerably lower and we think we have a good handle on what's going on and we're at a few percent instead of 25 or 30 percent, would you necessarily have to do it every year? You know what I'm saying? But in the long run, it's probably still cheaper to have someone who's qualified and who's doing it, you know, that's their job, that's what their expertise is doing it, than having us going around with a piece of equipment yeah. that a salesman couldn't even show us how to use correctly to try and find leaks in a town when we have the loss that we have now. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the man hours. I think especially at this time with how the employee structure right. is at the treatment plant and water department. I, wouldn't be the best I think thing our to... back is kind of against the wall to try and get some of this stuff pinpointed. But yeah, the correlator is only as good as the operator. You, know, right. you don't have somebody that, that's got an ear for that thing and knows how to, to operate it. And if we don't have the time to do it and do it religiously and stay focused on it. Uh, well, and the other thought too is if we get the whole, if we get, you know, get somebody in here, get the whole city done and they find all the leaks, Wisconsin Rural Water does have a correlator. So if we have a suspect area and we think there's a leak, we can call them like Tim did with the leak up on, what was it, Ridge, Ridge Road, Road, yep, and have them come down and do that, and that's a free service. So if we have an area we need just checked, if we have a leak and whatever, we can get them down here to do that because they have several of them and their employees know how to use them, but they're not going to do a whole city. Right. But if you have an issue, they'll come and do, yeah. do that, and it's a free service. So yeah, we did find out the city of Abraham's got a couple of them that they will rent out with an operator so you know we would have you know like again that real water seems thing to me, is though, it seems to me that i remember that we were having problems finding somebody to come and do that yeah. well or the problem was lack of initiative uh, maybe contacts weren't made that's correct you know, yeah. i i have no idea about that but i just remember that we were having problems yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was what was stated yes but contacts weren't made <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I think you should check and see how much it costs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then the next item is the displays for lift stations one and four. We talked about it at the last meeting. Um, I have a price quote for it for a little over $7,500. So um, I think the last time, the last meeting, 
it's because I didn't put in the language to discuss and possibly approve ordering it. So um, I think we should order them. Because so. they are getting worse, you said, correct? Yeah. Okay, and, we, since. and there's I a lead time Peter to out get there. And it's for sure just a screen. Everything else checked out. Yeah. So, I mean. Oh. All right. So we need a motion for that? Yeah, we'll need Pardon? a motion. Yeah. I, I would move that we order the new displays for, or approve the new displays for the stations one and four. At a cost of um, seventy-five fifty-four. Seventy-five fifty-four. For both. For both of them. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion by Dick, second by Bart to uh, order the screens for it. That was, that was there's new displays for list stations one and four. That was restructured money too, right? Is there any more any discussion? Restructured what? Not? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. I'm a tracker, I think. Moving on. Okay. The next um, item is the status of the phosphorus an analyzer at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, we're currently test driving an updated analyzer compared to uh, the analyzer that we had, I guess, from 2000. 17. 17. Yeah, which was a failure. Um, and Literally. so now this one, we're, we're starting to have issues um, with it. It's <laughs> not able to measure down to the levels we need to, um, and especially with a new permit in the future, our levels are going to be even lower, and it's not going to be able to um, meet the, the standards. Uh, we had, there's a, a, a part in there that they consider um, a wear part. It's a, it's a valve that's supposed to last a year, and it only lasted two months, and it's $500 to replace this valve. Well, they replaced it this time because we're just borrowing it, um, test driving it, so to speak. Um, but it's one of those things where if it's failed once already, how many times is it going to be failing per year. So uh, we're looking at another meter. It's a it's a brand. It's called ChemScan. Um, Peggy's very familiar with it. Um, it's very low maintenance, low cost, um, and it can reach the, the lower limits uh, that we would need to reach with our permit um, in the future. Um, so we're, we're kind of, I don't know what we're basically well, so looking at test driving this one also right. if possible. So trying to get more information on, right. on that from, from the vendor, uh, William Reed. So We had yeah. William Reed come out and give us um, some information about doing um, a trial, and they did get us a quote for that. Um, so that with the trial, you would issue a purchase order and then a check for the full amount. The trial period goes on for, I believe it's 45 to 60 days. And then if it is successful, then at that time, if we plan on keeping it, then um, the check would be cash and it would become ours. In the meantime, in the meantime, we were, we were just had them come and look to see how it would have to get plumbed in with what we currently have down there because we have the analyzer from upstairs down to by the sampler where it belongs. What we found in doing so is the analyzer, I, so when I sample every day, I sample our final composite out of our sample jug, and then I also sample what the analyzer is sampling, sampling from the machine, and then I sample the unfiltered water right next to the filter. The problem is this filter is so fine on Mulcahy Shaw's machine, on the YSI machine, that it doesn't allow the phosphorus that's in the solids to be tested. So what the machine is testing, if our effluent is dirtier than normal or if Sentient does what they've been doing the last three weeks, that filter gets fouled and then the machine tells me our orthophosphate is only like 0 0.16, 0 0.19, my composite's a 0 0.32, which is almost double. Now that's orthophosphate. We are, the DNR regulates us for total phosphorus. So then depending on what Sentient's flows are and our flows are, along with that orthophosphate, which I'm testing is double what the machine is reading, we could be off considerably. 
coming up the next couple months, our, our levels for what we can put out for pounds of phosphorus drop considerably. With that orthophosphate machine being off by as much as it is, the odds of us hitting that poundage are pretty slim. We're going to have to be using a lot of RE300 just to get to those limits. Kind of negates the idea of having a phosphorus hand. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we might as well just put the, the RE300 pumps in hand and just run blind because you're going to be doing about, that's basically what we're doing now, is guessing what we need to have it set at and toying with it because the results are so different. Now, in talking with Sensi in the last few weeks with the issues they were having, they are adding a considerable amount of polymer to help with their settling issues, and they're also adding an awful lot of uh, alum. alum to deal with their phosphorus issues. In doing so, um, they were causing some issues with our plant, but I do believe that's also what's causing the issue with these fine particles that are plugging up our filter for our orthophos analyzer. The one we looked at from ChemScan has a completely different setup. It's a small stainless steel mesh filter, very uncomplicated. The chemicals are considerably cheaper. The labor is considerably cheaper. The yearly maintenance kit is $1,400 versus, and if they have, he did tell us, um, the John Brandon that came to talk to us and their service guy, Richard, told us that if they have to come out to service it or troubleshoot something, if it's, you know, something off the wall, that's included as part of their sales and service. There's not an extra charge for them to come and figure it out. The other nice thing about the ChemScan is it's a locally based company. So YSI is based out of Ohio. So when we had to send this in the last time and Mulcahy Shaw came and got it, and Tom drove it, he drove it to Ohio. ChemScan is based out of Waukesha. When I worked in Mabel, we had an issue and they needed to troubleshoot it. They literally took the unit off the wall because it's a couple feet by about a foot wide, put it in a vehicle, drove it to Waukesha. Two hours later, they had it up and running and back on my wall. So it's locally repaired. It's easy to fix. There's very few moving parts in it, way less complicated than what we have now. And it can be hooked up to SCADA. The initial cost of it with the trial, I believe, I brought it along. And again, we don't, I mean, obviously this is just what we're looking at right now because we want to, I would like to have the guys come with me. I talked to Courtney over in Mabel about coming to look at their machine so they can understand how it works and see how, how much different and how much easier it is to run than what we currently have and how much more accurate it is. Um, but the price option for the, where would we would want to be, because the low range one that we would want to purchase in case our DNR limits goes down, um, that goes down to point zero zero three, which could go significantly lower than what we would need it to, but it would be we would never have to have an upgrade because it would get lower than what any limit that we would ever have. Um, that one would be twenty thousand eight twenty five. But the what Mulcahy Shaw had talked talked to Tim about when he was still here was this new one that we're doing the trial run on. What is that, Peter? Fourteen. 14, yeah. So we're talking almost two-thirds of the cost for something that's not operating to the standards we needed to. So, um, again, I mean, this is, I, I'm very familiar with this machine. Um, it's what we use. There are other communities doing it. Um, currently, Racine, Western Racine, Western Racine is doing a trial. They have um, a YSI, the ChemScan Mini and a hot one and they're running all three of them side by side and they're actually going to be purchasing one of these chem scans within the I believe he said the next week or two so and they've all heard the same thing that you know I mean because the filter on there allows the solids that our current unit is not testing through there so you're actually testing the water that's going through your system so sadly four years ago when this item was purchased not enough information was gathered and they didn't do enough checking on the different types of units and how they worked and whatever but now we're finding out that the money was spent and it's not an operational piece of equipment that's that's doing a good job for our facility so and we're coming up on a deadline um, right our trial our six month trial period ends the end of september I guess on this new one, is a 30 or 60 day trial period long enough? I guess that would be my only question. I think we would find out results within 
a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah. I, I, I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm more concerned about it breaking, I guess. Oh, I'm hearing the yeah. other one breaking. Sure. Right. That, that's what I'm hearing. I, I'm just, uh, that's my concern is a 30 to 30 right. 60 day long enough. I think so. Um, because I test orthophosphorus every day at our plant and do comparative testing with the unit we have now. So I would most certainly be able to do it with that unit as well. Um, the other thing is complexity wise, <laughs> from what we have now, mm -hmm. very complex to what we're going to be getting is way, way less complex. Way more, si it does a better job with more simplified equipment. Okay. Less moving parts. The tubing is a, so, and that's the other thing, in the, in the unit we have now, we're unable to clean, the unit cleans itself, but it has small tubing. It's not like you can go in and physically clean anything other than this giant you can't. fine it's, filter, and it's, even that's hard to it's clean. It's not serviceable at all. Right. So the new, the chem scan, you literally can, you take a cover off, you pull out this small stainless steel filter, you take a bottle brush, run it through there under running water, it takes 30 seconds, you put it back in there, and it's clean. With what he has now... He has to chlorinate it and then rinse it really well to dechlorinate it and you have to use a certain brush on it so you don't ruin the filter and the filters are ridiculous to replace. $600 a piece. Yep. So, and this, you replace the chemicals quarterly and that's included with the yearly maintenance kit which is only $1,400. And then they give you the, the little pump head assemblies are plastic and they, we never, you replace them twice a year and they come with the yearly maintenance kit so it's not an extra cost they come with it and they're super easy to change it's literally the one you replace is two clips and the other one you replace replaces two bolts I did it every year <clears throat> bottom line is part of the plant what this should be able to be brought out of the plant replacement of contract right? yes it is part it is a, I asked Lori about that it is a DNR replacement item yeah. Yeah. so it would be a no-brainer to me Okay. So is this something we need to bring up at another meeting to get approval? Like uh, discuss if possibly approved? Let's discuss and take action. So yeah. Yeah. we got it here tonight. We can take action. So we just need to... So do... Okay, so to understand, just so you all understand then, with the trial period, we have to issue a PO, and then they'll have to issue a check, which won't be cashed until... Um, the end of the trial period, the the end of the trial period and, and then it would separate. be purchased. We would have to prearrange, okay. um, you know, milestones saying it's it's working to our standards. And once right. it completes that, they cash a check. I mean, we'll have to look over everything just to make sure, but we just want to make sure that you guys all understand that's how it's got to go down. Yeah. So They do have demo units, but we wouldn't be able to get a demo unit Till December, until December, he said. Winter. Yeah. So, and we can't wait that long. I was going to say, it doesn't sound like you can wait that long. No. Mm -hmm. All right. What is your pleasure? I'll make a motion we purchase the phosphorus analyzer. For the, how much was the cost on it? Um, for the trial, including Everything. potential purchase, it was well. well probably <laughs> yep. So it's twenty thousand eight twenty five fifty, and then if depending on the pressure, if they have to include a pump system, because you have to keep the pressure between two and ten psi. That's an extra twenty five hundred dollars. So, grand total would be like twenty three three fifty ish. Why would you have trouble maintaining that pressure? Up? Well, because of where it's located. Yeah, because of where we have it down by the sampler. It runs by a gravity out of a tank. Oh, um, so right. It's, it's not. not under, it's, it's not under no, well it pressure. Would, it's no. basically we would potentially have to add a pump system with the regulator instead of running off gravity. And we're currently at 4 PSI, and they recommend 2 to 11. So we but may or may not need it, we but... We might need it, we might not. But it's an extra $2,500, so... So not to exceed the 20... So I, to be on the safe side, I would say not to exceed... 25, yeah. 25, yeah. Not to exceed 25. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Motion by Raw, second by Bart to uh, purchase the, the trial period for trial, the yep. phosphorus analyzer. And where's the money coming from? The DNR, DNR replacement. DNR replacement. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay. Um, then the last
last one, last item I have here um, is this letter I got from Nick. Um, apparently, Alliant Energy did an inspection of this building, the well, this, the, the well two side, and there's a gas pipe that's coming in through the wall, and apparently it's not insulated, it's not protected, and so. You guys been getting that for years, haven't you? Yeah, I got one too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is this a joke then? <laughs> it's a running joke. They want it done, but they won't do anything to you. So. Okay, so. You won't shut your meter off if that's what you're worried about. So. It involves removing the pipe that passes through the wall, wrap, wrapping it with a good grade electrical tape, and putting it back together. Mm -hmm. So, right. who does that? <laughs> License plumber. Oh, do you know anybody like that? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask you. Take care of that trouble's not doing anything. Hi. All right. So we'll look at that. All right. <laughs> so all right. Well, then I guess um, I just have some project updates. The consumer. Kind of confidence report was mailed to the DNR and posted at the office, um, and I guess it went in the bills earlier uh, last month. Uh, we had a phone call meeting with uh, DNR official, officials about the corrosion control treatment, and they told us that uh, we are to inspect all the homes by 2022 and verify through records, and in, when in doubt, um, that we should physically inspect the homes. Um, and then by 2023, all the lead is to be removed. And uh, we're thinking that the street projects that are happening in 2021 and 2022 should remove the majority of, of the lead. Um, and like Peggy said, we moved the, the other uh, orthopods analyzer downstairs by the final sampler. Um, the HVAC project for the treatment plant was completed. Um, the generator was repaired. Uh, they put in a new starter and starter solenoid. Um, we had a phone call meeting with Tom Monkey about uh, the surge summary definitions for sentient. Um, we also had a, another phone call on the, the 30th. Um, about the, the agreed discharge limits, we changed uh, the, some of the percentages in the language along with the concentration limits and the total pound limits uh, and received the draft documentation in, in an email this morning and I guess it's ready for legal review. Uh, the resolution for the CMR, CMR CMAR was submitted. Um, the water tower received the one-year inspection and uh, next inspection will be in five years. Uh, loop station two um, has the new ground wire, a neutral wire, and neutral bar was installed last Friday. Um, and then I met today with Municipal Well, who was going to be doing the VFD installation for wells one and three. Uh, the contractor informed me that it would be a challenge to install the drive at well three um, and I emailed the project manager to set up a time and he's going to meet with me tomorrow about that because apparently he it appears that um, they didn't really look at uh, the build they didn't look at well three to, to see you know what they needed to do in order to quote the job and so he just like this guy showed up and he wasn't really able to to do anything he's saying that it would need a new box um, the the drive would have to be installed inside of that so I'm gonna that it would need a new cabinet a new and cabinet, some other yeah, things and some and other ancillary things so so the court looks like it the, from the way Peter read the court it almost looks like it kind it should include that but we're not entirely sure about that but just because of the verbiage that's in there yeah. so So that's all I got. All right. How okay. important it is to have those VFD drives on the on those wells? Well, I don't think they're really VFDs. I think they're more soft starts in order to st start the well. Well, that is a soft start on well, the three right now. Uh, there's no well, what's the name? 
Well, didn't the other day, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing soft, soft about the way it started the other day. No, it's supposed to ramp up really slow, and it doesn't. It's just like.